Hello everyone and welcome to Learning Keyforge. This is our how to play video. It is a part of the Learning Keyforge series. If you're unfamiliar with the game, you can head to our website and catch that series for more information about what the game is. This video in particular is gonna show the ins and outs of how to play. Um, of course, I'm joined here with Steven. Hey. And uh, we're, we're gonna play some Keyforge. Yeah, so this is, now one thing I wanna kinda get at real quick is we've talked about how this is a unique deck game, right? So that's a, a new category, basically. This is a new kind of thing. Now one thing, if you're, before you start playing, if you're like really wanting to get a good rundown of what you might be doing during a game of Keyforge with your particular deck, and remember every one of them is different, so they'll play differently. Sometimes I'll like spread it out, I'll bust it out, and I'll look at how many creatures do I have, like do I have a lot of artifacts, do I, what are the like power cards that I need to be keeping in mind. Um, like one deck I busted out and it had like 16 steel cards. Like, so that is a steely deck. It's insane, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, I need to make sure that my opponent has Amber coming into the game and maybe let them build up early and then steal it later sure. in, the, uh, in the game. So. Speaking of Amber, that is the win condition here. So throughout the game, we're going to be collecting Amber. And uh, at the start of a turn, we'll break that down in a second. Uh, any turn that you start that you have six Amber, uh, you are forced to forge a key, which is the point of the game, right? So six Amber turns into a forged key. And once you have forged three keys, those are going to turn into uh, you winning. So, yeah. <laughs> ultimate voila. victory. Uh, <laughs> and the theme in that's pretty cool, which is each player represents an Archon, which is a character in this universe. And the Archon is basically, there's this planet with all kinds of things from all across the galaxy, um, all sorts of artifacts and craziness. Um, but gaining three keys is basically the key to enlightenment, and then you ascend to the upper levels of the world. Um, and so that's kind of what we're, we're both exploring to to learn and basically get to that point. Were it only that easy to become yeah, enlightened? Uh, but it's pretty cool because that also thematically leads to the game not necessarily being about winning or attacking as much as it is exploration and learning what's going on. Somebody said something. It, it's not conf a confrontational game. It's a it's like a productive style game. So you're, we're both gathering things and interacting with each other, but it doesn't feel quite so, uh, first of all, there's no interrupts, which is a big deal. There's no like, ah, no, you can't do that. One of my favorite things. Yeah, it's crazy. And then we're really just all both building towards our win conditions. So if you played board games, it's a lot like everybody gathering victory points over the course of the game. And then you look at the end and say, ah, oh, yeah, a little bit more computational than that, but you get the idea. For sure. So we're going to go ahead and start here. We have everything laid out. Um, you see Stephen H, you have an ID card here. Um, and this shows a handful of things. One, it shows the three houses that are in the deck. Every deck is three houses. We happen to be opposite each other. Twelve too. cards of, that's really, this is six different mm -hmm. houses? That's convenient. Um, and it also shows the name. Each, each name of every deck is completely unique. The cards are completely unique. And then the icons are completely unique. But this also, on the other side, actually has your entire deck list and a QR code. Um, more to come on what that really means. But it shows everything there. Uh, mm. So you put that over on the side. Love this deck already. And then we each have 36 cards in our deck, which have that same card back. Um, so of course we'll shuffle that up and we're gonna randomly determine uh, who goes first. And this is a good way just to check too, and they'll probably do this at tournaments or wherever. Like you can just literally look, count 36 card backs and say, okay, these are all of the same deck, great. For sure. So shuffled up, obviously you can give your opponent a chance to cut, but I doubt that's gonna happen. Not here. doing it. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just flip. Sure, on this, I'll a be one, ones. A one is you, a three is me. Three, so I'm gonna go first. Um, so there's a couple special rules about the first turn of the game and the first player. So the first player actually draws seven cards, while the, the second player is gonna only draw six. You wanna cut this? You're good. Uh, so I'll put my seven down. Always offer. And there is a mulligan rule. And the way the mulligan works is that you shuffle your entire opening hand back into your deck, shuffle it up, draw back up, but you draw one less card, and each player can do that one time. So I'm gonna lay out my hand really quick and just kind of take a look at it, see what I like. And see, I don't, I, and I kind of like uh, a little bit of ignorance when it comes to approaching the game table. Um, I don't even know this deck well enough to say, oh, I need a mulligan or not. Like every card in this game is a good. That's one of the crazy things that you can do whenever it's kind of procedurally generated like this is you can take a little bit, you can be a little bit higher on the chance curve because you know that if the card is a little too good, players don't just stuff as many in their deck as possible. Well, and I think what's <clears throat> it's it's very much like a sealed or draft format in a game. And so, like what you if you're familiar with sealed and draft, basically you, you build your deck with fresh cards and with a limited card pool. And so, what happens though is the game gets a lot more fundamental and a lot more mm -hmm. like the early games that you play of a game typically. So. 
every card is useful in sealed and draft typically. So I like my hand, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. All right, let me just show you, let's show the, the camera what's going on here. I'll, right. And I'm gonna talk this out with you too, Zach, because I think it's interesting. So when I'm looking at this hand, there's a couple of things that I know. One is I have already a Mars creature or stun a non-Mars creature, um, which is really nice with Zorg, who enters play stunned. So I could essentially, you know, put Zorg out, unstun, and then play this to ready. And it's like, ah, oh, that's great. Or I could send one of your, your big guys, which is nice. Um, and then we've got mass abduction, put up to three damage enemy creatures into archives. That's not gonna come into play for a while. I don't have anything that's gonna damage all of your creatures. So this is kind of just a little amber gatherer for me. Um, this is a nice little combo. I can throw smash out and then attach immediately with plus five power. Like, that's good. He's a 10 I love power this creature. house, by the way. And then Witch of the Eye is, is a great little tech piece. And you know, I think this is a really good chance. I'm happy to show my cards too, but to show the various cards in the game. So first thing here, we have a creature with Smash and Zorg, right? And you'll see the power. Um, one of the unique things about Keyforge is that power represents both the damage the creature does and its health. Mm -hmm. And then on the right, you'll see a shield that is the character's or the creature's armor. Armor is a once a turn, that much damage gets canceled. And so even if it has two armor and it takes one damage separately, those both get canceled yeah. kind of a thing. Um, we also see some action cards here with cards like Mass Abduction. So that's a typical event style card. You play it, it immediately goes away. You'll also notice on Mass Abduction, there is an amber on the top left corner of it, which means anytime a card with that on it gets played, you just gain that amber. And that's kind of at the top of the, the chain. Um, and then, do you have any artifacts over there? I don't have any artifacts okay. yet. But we do have an upgrade there with Blood of Titans, which is a something you attach to a creature. And I'll actually show my hand as well. I have an artifact here with the Library of the Damned. Um, and the Seeker Needle, actually. Nice, um, I love that little Seeker so Needle. So creatures and artifacts um, will come into play exhausted, which means they're tapped, um, and they don't get to do anything on their first turn. But these are these are cards that stay in play, and every turn that you activate it, you can kind of use their abilities, so. It's really nice to have artifacts early, too, I've noticed, you know, because the Building more uses board. you get out of that ability, the better. I'm gonna go ahead and mulligan just to see what that looks like. Okay, so now you, you had six. I had six, I'll, I'll draw up to five. And the thing about it, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, so Zorg's biggest ability, which was the big creature that I had, is the ability to stun things next to whatever he attacks. Um, which and you obviously, don't necessarily want early. Well, you're only going to play one card on your first turn, so That's right. it's not a great, not a great open. Okay, so you're mulligan. I like that you're using the mulligan here. I've never done it before, so I may as well just see what it feels like, right? <laughs> to shuffle back up. Worth noting, we're using some third-party tokens here. Some of them we bought. We bought the uh, the little amber things at Gen Con. There's just little and board little game shop cubes in the cubes, and then these are our Saga tokens for Star Wars Destiny, compatible with. And then we've also got some special resources that you get at the Covenant Masters. <laughs> Lots of Destiny drafts. Various series. tokens. You don't in need here. all of that. Just random tokens. We're yeah. playing. All right, you ready to go? I'm ready, and I think this is much worse, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he pauses and winces. It's fine. Okay, so uh, on a turn, the, the basic structure of the turn, the first thing you do is check to see if you have six amber or not. And if you do, again, you have to forge a key. So I don't have any amber. Obviously, I'm not going to get a forge a key. And then the second thing you do is you choose a house. So you can choose houses on the back of your card. And technically, as you read in the rule book, you can choose a house that's not on your card. Ah, just in case you take control um, of some other house's cards or something. Yeah, and there's also um, the... Uh, Maverick. I have to oh, think of right, John right, McCain yeah. cards. So apparently, I, I haven't seen this yet, uh, but John John McCain, I mean, Maverick <laughs> cards are in uh, certain decks, and these are not necessarily better, they're just like cards that don't belong that end up in a house. So like, maybe as an example, one of the houses on my card is Deese, and so instead of getting a 12th Deese card, I might get something from Untamed. And it'll have a cool looking uh, little logo on it. And I don't know if those are unique cards. We've never seen one. We'll see. I, the way that I understand it is like, let's say like that Zorg dude that I was looking at earlier could appear as a Shadows card. And so, so it's like just Zorg, but maybe skinned a little bit differently. And yeah. I think this is one of the big things, you know, uh, when uh, Richard Garfield was talking about, I always want to say Richard, but it sounds kind of presumptuous. Yeah. Um, but the I don't want to say Mr. Richard Garfield, Garfield either. It's uh, Dr. Garfield. Dr. Garfield, that's right. Uh, mathematics. So one of the things was creating that experience in Magic the Gathering where like, oh my gosh, I just drew this dragon that nobody even knows exists. I remember those days with early card games. I think there's gonna be stuff in Keyforce that's baked in that's like to get printed. And you have that experience of, oh my gosh, I've never seen a Shadow Troll before. That's the deck right? that has that card in it, which is really cool. It gets um, me a little excited. All right, so the <laughs> first thing you do is you choose a house. So I'm gonna choose Dees. Um, and because it's my first turn, I only get to play or discard a single card. Um, and I'm gonna play the Terror which is a creature. So uh, the reason I'm doing that in particular is he has a playability. And so playability is resolved after he's played. 
And the play says, if your opponent has no amber, gain two. So that's a really great uh, opening play, I think. Um, so I played a creature, it comes in exhausted, which is normal. And then because I can only play or discard one card, that's gonna basically conclude that section of my turn. Uh, Steven will show us the full version of that. But then I actually uh, ready all of my cards. And then I draw back up to six, but because I'm already at six, I get to draw zero cards. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's really, this order starts to fly by really quickly. Can I forge a key? Yes, no. Choose a house, do everything on the board and in my hand that is has that house on it. Uh, then, you know, ready everything, draw back up, pass the turn over. It's really nice. Uh, so my opening will be far from ideal because I've got a lot of kind of tech pieces. Um, but here's what I will do. I will do my uh, first action, I can't forge a key. I'm going to choose Mars as the house that I'm activating. So first I'm gonna play the Mother Gun and it has an action, reveal any number of Mars cards from your hand, deal damage to a creature equal to the number and of Mars cards. And that's an artifact. Cards. That is an artifact. So from now on, every time you activate Mars, you could potentially use that. Yeah. And then I'm going to play a Mass Abduction. It's okay. not gonna matter. Now I could hold this and I'm tempted to do it because the Mother Gun can put damage on things. Put up to three damage enemy creatures into your archives. Could be a really good card later on, but I really want to build my hand right now. So I'm just going to get the amber. It's the first thing I look at on a card. It has a little amber there, so I get one just for playing it, which is nice. Then I resolve the effect. Obviously, it's not going to put anybody back in hand or in archives. It gets discarded, and I've used it. Uh, and that is going to be my turn. So then I ready everything, and then I draw up to six. One, two, and three. And so this is actually really a cool point of the game, and this is what I was referencing earlier about not being about attacking. If this were a game like The Spoils or Magic the Gathering, me playing a creature on the first turn and you not it would be would a be problem. big. Yeah. Like it would normally be, oh, I'm gonna attack you with this guy and do five damage. Um, but that is not how this game works at all. And so you will see that play out right here. So my turn, I check for six. Amber, I don't have it. Next thing, I have to choose a house. I'm gonna choose shadows. So I can play any number of shadows cards. I can discard shadows cards. I can attack with shadows cards in the order of my choice. First thing I'll do is I'll play a secret needle, um, nice. which lets me take an action, do a damage to a creature. If it destroys that creature, I gain an amber. Um, I'm gonna play bad penny. Um, who's a creature, and when she's destroyed, she goes back to my hand. And then I'm going to think about this. I feel like I'm ahead on board position, so I'm just gonna discard bait and switch, which is a good card. No, it's a, such a good card. Uh, but again, I'm gonna draw back up to six, and it's gonna be a minute, I think, before I can actually effectively use that. So I don't want it to just hold a slot in my hand. So get it out of here. All right, and so that will conclude my turn. I will ready everything, and then I will draw back up. And one thing I do want to note at this point is the fact that where you play creatures actually matters. So where you play them, they're stuck. Um, and technically the outside, so the outside most creatures are on your flank, and anything in between them is not on your flank. But once they are like this, like the next creature I play has to go on one of these sides. And there are various abilities and cards that reference where creatures are and what's next to them. So uh, that becomes an important choice and what what houses you're activating and whatnot. Yeah, it's the neighbors and flanking key like uh, words that are critical. You also notice Zach couldn't do anything with the terror because chose shadows instead of these. So you're kind of you're doing this crazy dance between building a board for later, but you can't immediately use that thing next turn because maybe you want to build some some new boards and it's just exciting. All right, well I think I'm going to go Mars again. All right, okay. So I can't build a key. I'm gonna declare Mars as the house that I'm using. And then I'm going to, first action, I'm gonna activate the Mother Ground, reveal any number of Mars cards and do damage to a creature equal to the number. So I'm terrified. I'll go ahead and do two, and I'm just gonna clear out Bad Penny there. Okay, so when she's destroyed, she actually goes to my hand. Happened. All right, so that was just a reveal. And then as you might expect, um, Let's play Zorg here. So enters play stun. Enters play stun, so I'm gonna get a little stun. Now what a stun is, it basically you have to burn your next uh, action that you would wanna do something with Zorg, remove the stun instead. So I would tap, and then the stun's gone, and the next turn ready and get my stuff on. And a lot of the big Martian stuff comes into play stun, as you will now notice. Um, we'll also do the Dominator there, comes into stun. Also has an ability called Taunt, and it says the neighbors of this creature cannot be attacked unless they have Taunt. 
So basically, you cannot attack Zorg. You must attack the Dominator. If I put something here, you still must attack the uh, Dominator. And you know what? I think that is all that I'm going to do. So I will ready all of my cards. And then I will draw up to six. One and two. All right, my turn? All yours, yeah. All right, so I'm actually going to choose... Um, that's tough. Actually, you bouncing bad penny is bad for me. Now my hand is full of things I don't want. That's exactly right. Uh, all right, so I can't I'm, stand that card. I'm going to go ahead and choose Dece again, um, and I can activate things in the order of my choice. So let me think. I don't want to just get smashed. Um, let's go first. Let's go Mind Barb. Uh, it's an event. I gain an amber, and it says my opponent discards a random card mm. from their hand. There's two good ones in here that I really would rather you not discard. The rest of them, fine. I may as well just discard them, right? Ooh, I like Blood the of Blood Titans. The Blood of Titans. That's Plus a, five power attachment. And a free eights. amber. It's pretty good. Especially for like the Dominator. Yeah, Just give him five extra health and damage is really pretty good, crazy. wouldn't it? Uh, then I'm gonna play Library of the Damned. So it, as an action, I can archive a card. Um, that'll let us get to archives, which will be fun to explore in a minute. And then I'm gonna go ahead and Play and this is, I mean, I want to kind of hold it, but I've still I got five cards in my hand and I want to start seeing some of these other houses. But I'm gonna play Drumble. Um, it's a creature. It has elusive. It also has a playability. If my opponent has seven or more amber, I can capture all of it, um, which he doesn't and he won't for a while. So I'd rather just get a creature into play. Okay. Uh, and then of course I have the Terror. So I'm just gonna actually go ahead and Reap. And Reap is an action that any creature can take. So there's a few things they can do. They can attack. And we'll work through an attack in a little bit. Uh, they can also reap, and they can use abilities. So I don't have an ability to use or an action. I'm just going to go ahead and reap, and that just gets me an amber. Now at four, and that will conclude my turn. Mm -hmm. So I will ready everything, and then I will draw two to get back and to if, six. If everybody, t if you take a look at Seeker Needle, you'll see what a general action looks like, right? So that's where if a creature had that action, it could just simply take that action and do something with it. Or they might have a fight action or a reap action, various things. It'll tell you what to do. Okay, so. Let's do this, Zach. You're gonna love this. Am I? I don't have six amber, which is a bummer. You gonna rob me? I'm gonna declare Martian again. Man, I'm trip, gonna trip Martian. Kick it out with a mother gun. I'm gonna reveal two Mars cards to do two damage here. Okay, and the Drumble has Elusive. The first time this creature is attacked, it has dealt no damage, but this isn't an attack, it's direct damage, so there it goes. There she goes. Then, I'm really glad those Martians interplay with Stun. Oh, right. Because if not, that would be crazy. Play the Zookeeper there, so it's gonna stay taunted from the Dominator. And what does the Zookeeper do? Zookeeper is elusive, first time it's attacked, no damage is taken. And then reap, so when this creature reaps, put an enemy creature into your archives. If it ever leaves my archives, it goes into your hand instead. And then we'll throw in the dominator. Oh my goodness. Just keep, keep the taunt pressure hot. And then we'll activate Zorg to remove a stun. Activate dominator, remove a stun. I gotta get rid of that zookeeper. Then we'll ready everything. And draw back up. Luckily, I think I have a semi answer to that at some point. We'll see if we can get there. All right. I just keep drawing the cards, you know? So, because of the zookeeper, and again, this is kind of the balance. You know, I know he's got 12 Martian cards, and I've already seen six of them. Is there one in your archives as well, I think? One of my archives. So, we've seen yeah. six. He's only got six left. So, at some point, while all of his creatures on the board are Mars, it's like he's going, he might have more, a bunch more Mars cards in his hand. But I found that a lot of times at some point you have a lot of things out and then no cards in hand for the houses. So you yeah. have to choose between playing cards from hand and actually activating. Um, I'm gonna choose shadows. So I'm gonna do a handful of things here. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is... Ooh, I like shadows. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to play um, a shadow self. Um, he's got nine power. Mm, I love that he card. Doesn't deal damage when he's fighting, but damage dealt to neighboring creatures is actually dealt to him instead. Um, I'm going to play Bad Penny over here. I'm going to play a Silver Tooth. Um, 
over here as well. I don't want to use the shadow stuff on it. Now, Silvertooth has a text mm. that reads, Silvertooth enters play ready, nice. um, which is cool. And now he's got two Dominators next to the Zookeeper, though. So if I attack at Zookeeper, it's, I can't. I have to attack one of the Dominators. And I'm just going to kind of ignore them and hope I draw a yeah, clear this the board is great. Card. This is the best the Martians have ever done for me, honestly. Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually just going to take Silvertooth and Reap. So I'm going to get up to five amber here. And then I'm also going to use my Seeker Needle, and I'm just going to do one damage directly to the Zookeeper. Uh-oh. Uh, so next round, assuming he does, doesn't have a way of taking a damage off, if I choose Satyrs again, I'll be able to potentially get him off the board and get an amber for it. And that'll be my turn. So I'll ready everything. I don't know about all this. And then I will draw cards. And it will be your turn. Yeah, so this is the classic. This is is actually a really good hand also, but this is where you get in a situation like I'm in, like you were talking about, where you have your board built, and it's like, do you, do you, do you declare a new house to build more board? Or do you actually use this board? Or do you use this board, because it's now very much usable. Um, and I can throw that shadow self into archives, which is really important. I can clear off uh, terror. Um, you know, I can, I can do some, some stuff. So, I can't. I can't do uh, a key. So I've only got one of six. Now I'm you're gonna, gonna make a, a big decision. I'm gonna declare Mars. All right, it's here actually we go. still incredibly good. Uh, Mother gun for two. Oh man, on silver tooth. So it's gone. All right. What were those cards? I'll find out. In You'll a find out very shortly. That's what's cool. It doesn't really matter if you end up playing them technically. Yeah. I'm gonna let me get the bookkeeping out of the way here. Um, and I found that attacking is way more about containing your opponent's board. Their threats. Than it is about winning yeah. anything. And see, the terror is not a big deal. That's not a big deal. I'm going to first action, let's reap. And that's going to gain the amber. And then I can trigger the ability because I just did the reap action. Put an enemy creature into your archives. I'm going to choose this shadow self. Okay. And do you want to... How does archive work? I ultimately just kind of put it here. I like to put it face down, especially because it lets me see that it's your card. Now, whenever I declare a house, I can scoop my archives into my hand. This ability says that it would go back into your hand whenever I do that. Archives is a really interesting mechanic. It, there are some houses that really use it to build a big stack of cards, and then I can take a turn with like 16 to 17 sure. cards. I mean, that's an exaggeration. Like, I have the Library of the Damned here, so every time I activate these, I can take a card from my hand and archive it. Yeah. Which lets me go through my deck, but then at some point I also, you know, I might archive four or five cards from the same house, and then on that turn I bring those all to my hand and I play ten cards from the board, which could be really good. That's pretty cool. Okay, so then more Martian stuff. I've got two actions that I can take. I don't think the stun's gonna matter. Right. Stun only matters in that they burn an action. They would still attack back. I think that's a static thing, right? You always take the damage back. Yeah, no so what. even if a creature is stunned, so like if I attack the stun dominator, it would still do damage to me. Yeah, which is nuts. It's so crazy how that works. Well, let's do... I like... Yeah, let's just give the biggest... So let's attack Terror here. Okay. I'm going to take five. So the way this works, because uh, this is our first attack like this, is we each basically deal damage to each other. So you do nine to me, which will defeat me because I only have five power, but I also do five back. Take five there, okay, not a problem. And then I can either attack a bad penny or I can gain an amber with my Zorg here. Um, it's tempting to do. Let's do, um, yeah, I want that back in your hand. I'll take one. I'll attack Bad Penny. Take one. You take seven. Oh, which means she's destroyed and popped back to my destroyed, hand. Destroyed there. Uh, we'll go ahead and unstun the Dominator. Okay. So you just like action. reap and it cancels or something. And then let's put these two out. Blip, Pip, and oh, the Mind Warper. Oh, my goodness. This is reminding me of some terrible games against Jonathan where you just played all these Martians Dude, down. Mars sometimes just comes in and, and invades. Which is pretty cool. Uh, so this is a good ability. After I reap with Blip Pip, the next Mars creature I play enters turn ready, which I don't really have much of anything left, if I remember correctly. Then the Mind Warp, I can choose an enemy creature and it captures one from its own side, which is really cool. Nice. Now I'm ready everything. And I really need something that 
just clears you your board. You need that common cold. I don't I don't think you have the untamed in there, though. Yeah. All right. So and then I'll to, draw two. For me to build a board, I'm going to have to get the zookeeper off the board. So I'm actually, unfortunately, um, going to choose shadows again. And mm, I don't want to. Yeah. But I'm going to secret needle the zookeeper. So when okay. he gets destroyed, I get a free amber. And that's from the secret needle's ability, right? Yep. You'll notice that this slides together like so. Positions don't change. So now I'm taunting Zorg and Blit Pip. Okay, and then I'm going to play a Mascus Asp. So his damage is poisonous, which means it's always lethal as long as he actually does a damage. And he has Skirmish, so when he attacks, he actually doesn't take any damage back. Beautiful. And then I'll play Bad Penny again, and then that'll be the end of my turn. So these are ready. That reminds me, we missed something, which is armor. So if you look at the Dominator, it actually has a one armor value. Mm, we missed it, literally. So whenever it takes damage, it takes one less. I'll go ahead and yep. correct that now. Apologies and then for at the end of a turn, uh, which I am now, so I ready and I draw back up. If I have enough amber to forge a key, I have to say check. So you do, is what so you're saying. So I'm going to say check, yes. Oui. Okay. Um, so can I do anything about that? That's really what I'm wondering. Okay. Well, the way that I can do this is... Give me the Martians again. I can, yeah, I can Martian out like a boss. But there, there's, you know, there's also some diminishing returns on this, especially with your poison guy out. I don't know. Let's do Mars. It's just too good. They're here. I mean, I think that's what's the Mars thing to me. The more I play, it's like they actually need to keep activating. And so uh, that's an interesting, they're the one that I think, think demands the most in, that, in your action economy. All right. So let's start with what I want to do the most, which is choose an enemy creature. It captures one from its own side. I'm going to choose Bad Penny. Okay. So I capture it, which means it goes onto the creature. That's correct. Now, that doesn't count for keys and all of that. It's not like Renown and Thrones. I thought it was originally. Uh, it just sits there. It's, com it's, it's not contributing to your six. And then if that creature leaves play, I capture any amber on it, which Seems is like a nice. good exchange. Or not capture. I, I literally get. I don't know the best verb for that. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, we're going to attack with Zorg on Bad Penny. So before the fight, you stun uh, Bad Penny, that won't matter, but you also stun the Asp because you're stunning each of that creature's neighbors, okay. which is gonna be good for me. I take one damage because you have a power of one and you take seven damage. So that'll go there and Bad Penny will return to my hand. Back into the hand. And now we've got additional things. Now if I had Mars creatures or anything for Hopefully this mother out garden, this I would, point. but I am totally totally out. Christmas. So let's go ahead and reap, reap, and reap. That's going to give me three amber and check to you how the tides Zach. have turned. Ready everything up. The hardest thing about this game is remembering to ready at the end rather than the beginning of your turn. And then I draw up, but I have played zero cards. So All right. So I'm just going to, um, unfortunately, not deal with that. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, Sanctum. So I check. I don't have six available to me. Then I'll choose Sanctum, and I can play my Sanctum cards. So the first thing I'll do is Cleansing Wave. I heal one damage from each creature. Gain, I gain one Amber for every damage healed this way. So it'll heal from yours, actually. Ding, ding. But then I will gain two. Um, then I'll play Clear the Mind, which gains me an Amber and also unstuns each friendly creature. Nice. Look at you finding answers. Um, then I will play uh, Sequius, who comes in... Uh, Exhausted, obviously. And I'll also play a Shield of Justice. For the remainder of the turn, each friendly creature cannot be dealt damage. It's not really going to do anything, but it does have an immediate gain in Amber. And then I'll end my turn. I will say, check. Ready all my cards and draw back up to six. Okay. So now we go to my turn. I do have six. So I'm going to cash those out, and I'm going to get one key. Ding! All right. And you're on your way. On my way. So first to three keys is going to win. And then we go to the next. And this is the perennial, kind of what we were talking about early on in the video, which is you have this huge Martian board, but probably all the cards in your hand are maybe one or two of them are Martian. And so if you want to actually play and see new cards, you're going to have to, to do something. Because a single, right, If I had, there are cards that just clear the board. So if yes. I play that, 
you're going to be reset in a very hard way here. Yeah. Now, the other thing I could do, so this is where you start to feel out the tempo of the game, right? So I could also just choose Mars again and reap five times and go to five amber uh, and, you know, put that, you know, that back onto Zach's problem radar. <laughs> Um, and maybe clear off a uh, Sequus while I'm there. That Asp is still a, a bummer, but Zorg could deal with that as well. I'm I'm gonna make you deal with it. All right, just putting the tempo on. How boring just, would that be if you just marched in literally just the whole game? And just did it. Um, okay, so let's go Mars. I've just got some really good plays to set up next time around. Um, Let's use this action, choose an enemy, and capture one to Sequus. So you archive them? No, no, no. I'm just doing the one oh, Amber onto it. it. Yeah. Mind Warper is super cool. Like yeah. That. Uh, and then let's attack with Zorg on Sequus. So it's going to soak two of the seven. Five will go through. So he'll get defeated. And he will stun all neighbors. And it'll do four back to you. But I will take four. So I'm at five out of seven. Seeker Needle looking good. Yeah, still need to get one, one and through. And then I will reap, reap, reap. All right. Put Did you give me a turn on. that I captured? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the board. For playing by the rules. Ready everything. And then I will pass the turn to you. Okay. Uh, so the start of my turn, I do have more than six. So I will clear six, and it's important to note, I'm gonna forge a key, um, but you can only forge one key per turn. So even if I had 18 ember, I would only use six, and That's then we'd right. go on to the next one. All right, man, those, the double dominator is just... Isn't it cool that it's actually, it's worth noting that even with this setup seemingly being just like out of control, we're essentially even in terms of the actual wind condition. Pretty pretty close so to really, what's going on. It's really fascinating. I'm gonna have to pull the Band-Aid off eventually. I think Zorg is going to die soon. Uh, and then after that, <laughs> Hopefully, it's if, a matter of- If we're lucky. What happens? Um, let's go, hmm, this is just tough. I drew some weird. Sometimes that happens. Weird it is very much like a sealed environment where the, the mood, the tide can swing super quickly. And I feel like the cards are designed in such a way that that becomes a kind of a feature of the game. Sure. That it's always just kind of like, eh. Let's go. If you, if you didn't keep stunning my ass, I would I know, right? have some other choices here. Zorg um, bringing the party. Let's go. It's hard. I'm going to go Shadows. Um, yeah. I think. Am I going to go Shadows? I think I have to. All right, so let's go. Um, I'll just reap here to get rid of the stun. Cool. Um, and then I'll play a moon cursor. Um, it has skirmish and poison, so when it's attacking, it doesn't take damage. If it does any damage, it uh, kills whatever it's doing damage to. Play bad penny again. Um, I'm going to exhaust, and we'll do one to the mind uh, warper. Don't like the mind warper? Well, I'd like to get him off the board here. <laughs> Um, and then I will pass. So I'm gonna ready everything, and then we will draw two more cards. And we'll see what we get. Okay. Okay. So you're saying? I'm saying there's a chance. It's been an interesting one. I feel like you keep having this weird pressure on you to keep going Martians. I um, do. They just arrived, and now here they are. But again, when you choose a house, right, you can't discard or play cards from other houses, which is a cool little rule, which prevents this right here from being too good. I've just been sitting here. So yeah, so eventually this is gonna decay. There's potentially a, a big turn where this kind of breaks down and then you kind of find yourself in the lead. I've seen that happen before. But it's also real good right now. And so you kind of want to milk it. Don't you? I understand. I mean, don't you, ultimately? We know I don't have any Mars creatures in my hand. I think that's fair to say. <laughs> if, if you do, you've really been uh, doing a good job hiding <laughs> yeah, it. The whole time. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to use Mothership or play a new creature because I just don't want to. Okay. Um, I will go with Mars again. <laughs> Dude, let's do it while we got it. That's let's funny. Uh, capture that to 
Mm, yeah, there's a part of me that wants to do that, but I've also got I've also got one armor here, so I could take out the moon cursor. Hmm. This is gonna be really funny. What's man? Things I'm, that are happening here. I might just uh, I might just do it a different way. Let's uh, let's put it here. All right, I just want to see what this looks like. I don't think this is ideal, but I think it's fun. Um, That's why we're here. When this creature to so if they, fight. if they damage something, period, uh, they kill it, and then when it's fighting, so when it's defending, it's not okay. considered fighting. Cool. Uh, it doesn't take damage because if not, you couldn't. That makes sense. Deal with it. And then let's go ahead and swing at the asp with Zorg. So before the fight, it's going to stun it and all of its neighbors. And then it's going to take three, and that's going to poison it to death if it wouldn't have killed it already. And then Asp is going to take seven. It's gone. Which gives me a nice bit of juice. And then... This is going to be just fun. You're going to love it? <laughs> Am I going to love it? I don't know. It's <laughs> just... The, this, is, this is probably the weirdest game I've played so far. Well, that's good to get on camera, right? Yeah. Uh, reap. 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 It's a game in three. Putting me in check again on your second check. key. What do you got there? Eight? Eight. Seems good. All right. My turn? Your turn. You're still not drawing any uh, cards? I need to ready. And yes, I would draw up to six, which I have six. All right. And so the thing that stunned me is gone. That was Zorg, right? Yes, it is not. And wait, what is, yeah. is that? Oh, it's before fight. So typically a fight ability, just to be clear, only happens if the creature stays in play after the fight. Uh, but that is a unique case. So, you know. All right. Um, well, let's go shadows. Uh, let's, Seeker needle coming let's in Let's get real here. So I'm going to go ahead and use a seeker needle, and we'll do one to the mind warper, so I will gain an amber. Because that ability says gain one if you destroy the creature, right? That's right. And then I'm going to play Relentless Whispers, so I gain one immediately. Hmm. It also says deal two damage to a creature. If it destroys the creature, I steal one. So I'll do two damage to Ooh, blip up, and there they go. steal one, so that means I take it from him. Uh, and I don't I know take if it I, from you. Did I gain it from playing? Oh, the trigger. I don't think so. Let's find out. Then just I, think about it. I think I had two, and I do one here, one from playing, and then one from killing. Yeah. I um, believe it. We'll run the tape back. And then I'm gonna play Relentless Whispers, so I gain one immediately. Hmm. And I'll play Relentless Whispers, so I gain one immediately. So I gain one immediately. Gain one immediately. Gain one immediately. Yeah. Did I gain it from playing? Oh. Run it back. Audience will keep you honest, right. I assure Then you. I'm gonna play Miasma, which immediately uh, gains me one, and it says your opponent skips the forge a key step on their next turn. So that'll go away. And then I'll go ahead and reap both of these. They're stunned, so it just makes the stun tokens go away. Um, into my turn, I'm going to say check because I have six amber. I will ready everything. And remember, you will skip the forge a key step of your next turn. And then I get to draw two cards. This is awesome. I mean, look at that. It's great, right? So. Again, what we're seeing, and this is what I was saying earlier, it's not all about fighting, where you've consistently just kept my board at bay, um, but we're essentially within one amber of each other, and now we both have two creatures out. Yours are the Dominators, which is crazy, but I'm still hoping to draw something that can actually uh, do something about that. All right, well, uh, we're going to go to a new phase of the game called Choosing a Different House. <laughs> Yay, we did it. Uh, I, was, I was legitimately afraid you would win the game. <laughs> just the whole time? Just play all my March stuff and go. If the game was designed in such a way that that happened often, I think we would just be like, ah, this isn't any good. But, but that's where, like, I, I really do cool. think you have these weird moments where, like, you can go back to back to back with a house. Um, but, like, you could have one turn in there, you could have not done Martians mm -hmm. to play two or three cards, to draw two or three more that could easily have gotten you... Could have been more Martian. More Martian cards than the mothership triggers every turn kind of a thing. Yeah. So, anyways. I'm going to do Untamed. So normally I would forge a key. However, I have to skip that because of Miasma. Thank you very much for that, Zach. What I really need is that uh, bait and switch that they got rid of at the first thing. Yeah, right? That would have been perfect. Time for it. This next, yeah. Uh, first action. I'm going to choose Untamed. First action is going to be an Ancient Bear. Mm, I love that bear. Yeah, it's great. It does two damage before the attack, basically, as it that's the assault ability. And it looks great and weird and Martian y. I'm and Martian -y. Play a Witch of the Eye. It has a reap ability, return a card from discard to hand. Incredibly good ability. Man, um, that's really strong if you get a good untamed like event going. 
Oof. I'm gonna play Grasping Vine to turn three artifacts to their owner's hands. <laughs> up to three. Yikes, uh, and it gains you an amber. It's gonna gain me an amber, so we'll resolve that first. Let's go ahead and throw those back into your hand, please. Man, sir. that's crazy. But here's the key, Zach. Let's play Key Charge. Lose an amber if I do forge a key at current cost. So I'm gonna go ahead and Forget your miasma and forge a key wow. directly with that ability. That is going to allow you to keep applying some pressure. But Could again, not have been happier about that. Now you're down a lot of creatures. Uh, and we'll get to see some more of the nuance here with having multiple creatures from multiple houses out. All right. And three, four, five, and six. Beautiful. Okay. Look at this. I notice I can't do anything with the Martians because I did not declare Mars as my house. It's hard to get that into your head, uh, but you'll do it. You'll get there. A fascinating little mm. game. Every time I play it, I, I do like it just there's, more. There's more yeah. layers. You <laughs> unpack crazy. a lot of layers every time you play it. All right, so my turn. Yeah. Uh, start of my turn, I do have six, so I will clear that, and I will actually forge a key. And now you're really starting to see, because we're both essentially six amber away from being able to win the game. Um, yeah, it's so, scary. I've seen people get six in a turn. Easily. I mean, I, mean, just I, like I think I gained stuff. four or five that last turn. Mm -hmm. So that is how it goes. All right, I think I have to go Sanctum, uh, which is cool, oh, okay. because I'm going to okay. play a completely different house. Um, so this is going to get... I Honestly, if I had a little bit more out in terms of shadows... Because this has skirmish and poison, so like I could attack the bear. You could just start killing. Kill yeah. Um, but I'm gonna save that uh, for a good reason. You'll see that in a second. Um, let's go with Sanctum. Like I said, um, I'm gonna play Lady Maxina when she has a playability. Stun a creature, so mm. I will actually stun the bear. Mm. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, these should be standing up. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm going to play... I told you it was the hardest part of this game. To remember that? Yeah. Uh, Raiding Knight. Uh, when I play him, he actually captures an Amber, so it'll move straight to him. Man. If he's defeated, you'll get that back. Um, I'll also play a Staunch Knight. While he's on the flank, he has plus two power, and he's currently on the flank. Um, and then I will play Blinding Light, which gains me an Amber, and says, choose a house. Stun each creature of that house. I will, of course, choose Martian. And that will stun both of your dominators. Not my Martians. That definitely changes my next turn. <laughs> yep. And then I will uh, end my turn. So I'll ready everything. I will hmm. draw back up to six. So I draw two. Wow. Where's that bear stunned? Why you why you stunned my bear? He's That's, he good. That's a real bummer. I gotta tell you, that is a real bummer. You're welcome. So you're you're in a good spot here. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, it's the end of the game approaches very quickly. Uh, and a lot of times like this, right? We both got there and had very little on the board. You bounced my artifacts, which also flooded my hand, by the way. Mm. Uh, <laughs> You're dang right. It's just like, uh, okay, what am I supposed to do with this? Okay, so you can return her to your hand. You need plus two power over there. All right, well, let's go ahead and just run it around the circle, huh? I'm going to uh, check for key. I don't have any amber, so I'm not going to forge a key. Then I'm going to declare Brobnar. All right, you're hitting all three here. Let's just <laughs> run the we circle. We hit all man. three. Just throw them around the infield. Um, and I've got some great some great things to do here. I'm trying to think if it, the order matters. You always want to pay attention to where you want these creatures to be, if that does matter. And that I matter. think generally the best thing to do, and I don't know this for sure, but I feel like the flank is the most exposed. So I think it depends on the houses you're playing against. I've seen Dece in particular attacks non-flank. Yeah, they have the it's like a creature, destroy not a creature on a not on the flank. Yeah. Um, so early on, it doesn't really do anything because two creatures are both on the flank. But by this point, right, it could just basically get rid of one of your dominators. I don't know if any of those are in this deck. I could look. I don't remember the name of the card though. Okay, check this out. This is going to be good. I like this. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Ooh, yes. It's like, oh yeah, I remember what it's like to play cards in this game. Ah, it's so good. Okay. I'm just going to run it down the uh, down the edge here. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is play a Fire Spitter. Before fight, it deals one to each enemy creature. Wow. Which is That's nice. not good for me. Yeah, which is why it's great. Second, we'll play Smash. 
Play ability, stun a creature. I'm going to stun the staunch knight. Okay. He's a baddie right now. I'm feeling the pressure. I feel this. this is great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like the tempo pressure. Let's play a troll. When he reaps, he heals three, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, just a big baddie. Okay. And then the moment. The important moment. Yes, yes. Make sure you don't have any weird abilities. Okay, I'm going to play Anger. Ready and fight with a friendly creature. So first I gain an Amber for playing it. I'm going to ready, Fire Spitter, and then I'm going to fight with it. And I'm going to attack the Raiding Knight. So first we do one to each enemy creature. So these, uh, Bad Penny gets destroyed, goes to my hand. Moon Crusher gets destroyed. Lady Maxina has armor, so yep. she'll cancel one, cancel one, cancel one. All right, and then five here. So we'll cancel one from my other armor. I'll take four. You sure will. Which means I will get destroyed. You will also take four. So you'll get your amber back and he'll go away. That's right, I'll get my amber back. And that is that. And then we'll ready out. And now I kind of, I like this setup a lot because I've got creatures from all different houses that I can activate. Now, if these Martians weren't stunned, and if this bear wasn't stunned, it would be way better. It would be better. For me. I agree with you. Um, one, <sighs> two, three, four. Just like and now we've entered the hard part of the game. Yeah, just looking at it and asking yourself, do I have a way to do anything about this? I think it's, I think it's good. I think this game is really good. This is like, this is to me, this is the, I mean, there's a lot to say about it, but it's, in a lot of ways, it's everything, most of the things that I love about the various card games I've played over the years. I feel like it's hitting like every cylinder that most games hit some of. This is hitting the most, depending on how you feel about deck building. Because I like my deck building games too, like there's certainly an appeal there, so I wanna keep playing one or two of those. But man, for just like a sit down and play kind of game. It's pretty good. It feels like spoils, it fan. feels like magic, it feels like Star I, Wars in a lot of ways. There's not a good choice here. So I'm gonna activate Sanctum. Um, I'm gonna play an artifact. I can action heal three damage from a creature. Um, I'm gonna play Potion of Invulnerability. It's got Omni, mm. so I can sacrifice it. My creatures don't take damage during that turn. What does Omni mean? Omni is a action that you can take even when you don't declare that house. Perfect. So if I play cards from another house, I can still use that uh, artifact, which is good. My Staunch Knight will reap to get rid of his stun. Um, with Lady Maxina, actually, I will use her action to return it to my hand. And, and then the I will play her, and I will stun oh, yeah. the troll. So that's how she works. So that he can't just come and wreck my day. All right. Um, and then that'll be the end of my turn. So I'll ready all these cards, and I still have, you keep bouncing stuff to my hand, so it's just full of stuff I don't want. I've got and I'll draw a card. Yeah, I've got a great turn coming up. Sorry to tell you. You're going to love it. I have not been loving what I've been seeing at this point. Well, I guess it's time to just, uh, you know, throw that one in the garbage and buy a new deck for $10. That's right. right? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I think you should uh, learn it and get better. All right, my go. I am going to declare the untamed. All right. Actually. So I've got some goods to do here. So, see now I'm, I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it careful, carefully here. There's a lot of cards that can make your day go wrong. All right, so I'm gonna play Lost in the Woods. Okay. Choose two friendly and two enemy creatures. First of all, I get the amber. Oh no! Not Shuffle again. them into their owner's deck. I thought you were gonna bounce to my hand. It's I'm actually like... gonna put these dominators back into the deck. Sure, if you can believe it. Clears the stun. Clears the damage. Yeah. And so it gives me that mother gun to power up. If I, need I assume to. you're triggering both of these? Yes. Yeah, please. That could be particularly good if you had low cards in your deck, right? Yep. Mm, there's a card I just saw that I really want in my next hand. I'm going to give you a chance to shuffle here. Yeah. All right. So all right. there's that. So this is all going to collapse in on itself. It gets rid of my taunt, but that's fine. Uh, then... Another untamed card. I will play the uh, Niffle Ape. Let's put the Niffle Ape over here. When it's attacking, ignore Taunt and Elusive. And actually, you know what, Zach? I'm going to put it over here so I can have a nice board where all of my sides are together. matching. Welcome to how I play games. Uh, then I'm going to 
reap here. Okay. And that's going to give me one amber, and I'm going to return Lost in the Woods to my hand. Just in case. Let's make sure that's what I want to do. So anything here, like if I can get really close to forging a key again, so that's an important thing to know that the witch can get that back in and forcibly key. Yeah. Um, Seems good. See, I could bounce those artifacts, but I don't think that's terribly important right now. Um, so I'm going to hold on to that, and I'm going to just try to kind of keep you at bay, essentially forever. And then I'll activate the Ancient Bear to remove the stun token. And that's all that I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to need some magic well, actually, here. Actually, I may discard. Um, actually, yeah. I'm not going to discard anything. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right, mine. Over to you, sir. This is not great. Uh, I'm going to choose Dees. I'm going to play a Dust Imp. When he's destroyed, I get two Amber. And another Dust Imp. I would have loved mm. those earlier. A Library of the Damned. And then that'll be my turn. Wow, yeah, you see those guys early. It looks really good. So already, I'll draw three cards. Mm. These are good cards. These are good cards. All right, you ready for some action? Yeah. Show me what you got. I'll declare untamed. So first thing I'll do just to really get the amber, exhaust up to three creatures. One amber on the play. Let's exhaust both of those guys. Then I'll play a Lost in the Woods okay. for an amber. And we'll just go ahead and shuffle those guys back in your deck. I just needed the amber. And we'll put these two back in. Yeah, the Witch of the Eye is crazy. Isn't that good? With uh, Lost in the Woods over and over again. Yeah. That deck has a lot of ways to just get rid of my Well, creatures. you start, and see, this is the, this is what, when people talk about learning the decks, like that's something that I've never thought about before. But you start to think like, well, I think this was planned. It's like a witch in the woods and all these kids are getting lost in the card. It's like, yeah. that was intentional, right? That had to be intentional, It's like yeah. so, so this is a, and this is what the game does. Like, this is a good card no matter what. But then there are cards scattered throughout that happen to synergize really well, so it feels really cool. Uh, and then that gets me at six. We'll go ahead and just reap here. That'll be plus one, and I get to put something back into my hand. Of course, it's gonna be the key forging thing. And then, as you might expect, Zach. You're gonna forge your last key. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna lose an amber if you do forge a key at current cost. And you did it. That's it. So you win. Good game. After getting wrecked in our L5R series, I've really made an impressive comeback. And like in the last couple of games. videos we've done. This is uh, one of the cards I was looking for is Obelite or Obelette. Uh, purge a creature with three power or lower. Yeah. So I can just remove her from the game. Um, but yeah, I just want, I also like that card, Mind Control. Um, I, your, that deck is, was removing my board consistently. It's really good. It was good. Yeah. So sometimes, and that's the thing, it is. it does feel very much like a sealed environment where like sometimes there's scenarios that happen like I happen to draw like 10 Martians up front, which is really impressive. Now it wasn't, the good thing about this, it wasn't like, oh, the game is over, there's no play sure. here, there's nothing to be done. Um, could you have played differently to play out of it? That's a good question. That's something I don't know. Obviously, uh, we're not at the point where we fully appreciate that. But I was I was only four amber with, with as you much as your board was just rolling. Um, and I think that's one of the cool balancing. You kept doing Martians, but you also weren't playing cards. Mm -hmm. So it was very fundamental. Um, and if I had had ways to just clear some Martians, it, it would have been a very different game. Yeah, and that's the that's just the, the cool thing about it. Every time, so we've played this two or three times now, mm -hmm. and it's been very different every time. Like the, the decks have played, not that the decks have played different, but just depending on the order and the outcomes and the way that we're doing things. Uh, you've won a couple, I've won this one. Uh, so it's it's really nice. I uh, Another concept worth mentioning are chains. Which oh, that's is, right, uh, yeah. We didn't really hit them in this game, but it's, I think it's worth saying. Yeah, so chains, it's a mechanic that comes into play. Some cards in your deck are going to say take chains because generally they have a very powerful ability. A lot of the board wipes, at least the one out of Deese that I've seen, says like take three chains afterwards. Yeah, destroy all creatures. That's right. Ugh. So 
The way chains work, it's a natural handicapping mechanic. Now there's been a lot of talk about how chains might be utilized among friends or in play groups or even at tournaments based on a deck's performance just being overwhelmingly good. Maybe we throw some chains on that deck and now it starts the game with X number of chains. And what chains do is they restrict your ability to draw cards. So that's probably the most egalitarian way to handicap a deck is just give it less tools to work with. Sure. The way that this works is a range of chains equals X number of cards less drawn. So one to six, you're gonna draw one less card. I think it's seven to 12, you draw two less cards onward and upward. Yeah, and so Heaven forbid time, you ever have like 25 chains. Well, if that happens, it's a miracle. <laughs> but maybe it's that big of a handicap. That's um, right. But the fundamentals on chains is every time you would draw back up at the end of a round, you actually draw that many less cards and you get rid of a chain. So. Cards that gain one chain are basically a one one turn minus one card. Uh, the three chain card is three turns at minus one card and so on and so forth. Yeah, so if you imagine uh, I've got three cards at the end of my turn, I need to draw up to three. I would draw two, which is minus one, and I would remove one chain. All right, it's gone. You're on. And so I do that, and so eventually I'm unchained, I'm back to drawing normal. Uh, but you know, a deck might start with six chains or something. So you get six turns of a deck drawing one less card. For instance, if Zach kept losing to Wind Wing over here, we might say, well, I bet I can beat you with six chains at the start of the turn. I'll take that uh, bet. Maybe better beer or something, and, and we'd see if it works. So that's how chains work, and uh, one of the, I think those are all the mechanics in the game that we've covered so far. Other ones are pretty easy, you can find them in the rule book. One of the things too is that the more you play with a deck, the more lines that you see, which mm -hmm. is just chains of actions that do really good things for you. So even like, you know, you, you recognize that you had a bunch of Martians and you can play it, but like next time we played, you won't draw that many Martians. Right. Statistically speaking. It'll be different. Uh, and so like each, each game, and I think that's what has always attracted us to sealed environments in general, is that it makes every game feel very unique. Uh, yeah. And the combination of cards get weird. So very cool. Um, that's of course how you play Keyforge. And, and next time uh, I come in, I'm gonna be looking at Witch of the Eye, right? Like this card is way different now, especially when it's paired with randomly. Again, this deck happens to have the Forge a Key in Untamed. So it's like, oh, well this is a huge threat in my deck. Sure. In another- Or even just Lost in the Woods. That's over right. Over and over again. But again, the game too has a lot of things where you can just get rid of a creature. Mm -hmm. So even those like very powerful things, uh, a lot of times you have ways of dealing with. Absolutely. So. All right guys, well thank you so very much for watching. This has been How to Play Keyforge. There's a lot going on in this game that doesn't immediately present itself. I think that's fair to say, right, Zach? Very nuanced. When you start sure. playing, so like our first few games were pretty clunky, and then we've kind of gotten in the habit, and now, honestly, it's hard to not keep playing because we'll probably uh, try to play another game after the cameras stop rolling. And really just still feel like there's a lot to learn. There's so much to learn. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Check out our website for more on learning Keyforge. We've got a lot more resources, including what the game is, how to buy it, everything you need to know. You can find that all on our website. And until next time, keep playing.